there are some common forces you'll encounter. So we'll define them and some important things about them here. One is a normal force. If you think about somebody holding up a bag of Bow Wow Chow here, the weight is acting down on the Chow, and then it's being held up because we have the hand underneath it holding it up. Fine, you're fine with that because, okay, my hand's doing something. But what about when you place it on a surface? The weight is still acting down, and it's still not translating down, so there has to be some force holding it up. And this is that normal force. This is a reaction force that is preventing this Bow Wow Chow from going through the table. It's called a normal force because it's normal to the surface. So this is a surface-surface interaction where you've got something resting on a surface, and there will be a normal reaction force that's acting normal or 90 degrees to the surface. So at a 90 degree angle there to whatever surface you're resting on, there'll be a force resisting that motion. And obviously if it's too heavy for the table, then it can break through the table and then other things are happening, right? But as long as you're not passing through the surface or deforming the surface here, you can see it's deforming somewhat, um, but there'll be a normal force in response. Frequently this will be up and down, but you can imagine if the surface were at an angle, you'd still have a normal force, but that would be still normal to the surface. So if your surface is at an angle, the normal force is still coming normal off that surface. Another force is tension. If you have a rope, a string, a cable, you'll have a tension that can be exerted in there. Here we have a weight hanging from a cable. And this is demonstrating that, all right, we have a mass with the weight acting down on it, and you have to have some tension acting up on it to hold it there stationary and that tension is transmitted throughout the cable. Tension forces can only pull. You can't push with a rope, you can only pull with the rope. So they're always going to be pulling away from things and they're transmitted throughout the whole rope. So that's a tension force. Always pulls and it pulls axially along the direction that that rope is aligned in. So you know the direction along with the line of action, it's along the direction of the rope. Some other forces, friction, we've talked about this. This will always oppose the direction of motion and we'll cover it more later. And then there's a spring force. So this spring force is if you have a spring, you can compress the spring and it will try and restore to the original length. You can also stretch out the spring and it will still try and restore to the original length. And so the spring force is always opposite the direction of compression or extension. So it's opposite the displacement and it has a magnitude that's given by a spring constant K here which is a measurement of the stiffness of the spring. So how stiff your spring is, is your spring constant K, a higher K means the spring is stiffer, so it's harder to compress. And this relationship is called Hooke's law, that your restoring force that the spring exerts is equal to negative, that means it's in the opposite direction of my displacement X, and it's proportional to that spring constant K. So F is equal to KX, and the negative there is for the vector expression telling you it's always opposing the displacement.